Greetings and salutations everybody, welcome to the John Campy YouTube channel and this is the companion video. Now, every day on the John Campy Show and on Open Mic, we take a lot of live questions from you guys and most of the time, we don't have enough time to get to all of the live questions come in. So every once in a while we do these companion videos because I want to make sure you guys know that when you send in those live questions, they will get answered. Even if we don't have time for them on the show that you send them in on, we'll get them answered here on the companion videos. So we got a whole bunch of questions to get caught up on here. So let's get going and we get started with this. History Soup writes, Favorite Hitchcock film, Mine South by, or North by Northwest. I almost said South by Southwest because it's a film festival, it's on the brain. Anyway, um, you know, it's funny, somebody asked me that, that same question. Uh, favorite Hitchcock film, maybe a week ago, two weeks ago, and I actually said North by Northwest. Now, with Hitchcock, there's a whole ton of classics that you could talk about, but the one for me that it normally comes down to is North by Northwest. That's usually, that's the one I said before, it's the one I'm gonna stick with. That's my favorite. All right, next up, I can't think of a good username writes, over or under 50% the Nick Fury loses his eye in Captain America. It's a good question. Now, we heard Nick Fury say before, I trusted somebody once, lost me an eye, or something along those lines. Whether we're gonna see that happen in Captain Marvel, I don't know. I've got a feeling it's gonna come later, or maybe we go into Captain Marvel and he already has his eye, but you're setting the perfect line on this. 50-50, I'll take the over. Now, if you'd set the line at 70%, I would have said under, but at 50%, I'm gonna take the over on that. I think somewhere in the Captain Marvel movie, we are gonna see Nick Fury lose his eye. It's either that or I have a feeling they're gonna go into it with him already having the eye patch. I think it's gonna be one or the other. I, I don't think for whatever reason we're gonna get to the end of Captain Marvel without him having lost his eye. If anything, I think we're either gonna go into the movie with him already having the patch, or he loses it in the movie. But one way or the other, I think by the end of Captain Marvel, he's gonna have the eye patch. That's my guess. I'm, I don't have any insider information, that's just my guess. All right, Trevor Brooks writes, finally saw A Quiet Place. Even though I'm not a fan of horror movies, I really liked it. Seeing Infinity War tonight. Well, I mean, th this you sent to me the other day, so you would have already seen it already, huh? But A Quiet Place. I mean, let's, I mean, yeah, Infinity War is great, but we're all expecting it to be great. The Quiet, or A Quiet Place, is just this little film that snuck up on us. It's like John Krasinski's directing a little horror movie, looks kind of cheap, and it's just maybe the best film of the year so far. And it's just amazing. I cannot talk enough about A Quiet Place. And just what a remarkable job directing John Krasinski did. The performances in it, both from Krasinski, Emily Blunt, the kids who played their children in the film were mind-blowingly good, especially that deaf girl. But the little boy was amazing too. I mean, it's just such a great film. Big surprise to me. Might, might be my favorite film of the year so far. I'm not really sure. I gotta think about it. Uh, Boy Chow Sang writes, what's your take on the Apu, the Apu character controversy? So for those of you who don't know, there's a little bit of controversy going on about the way the Simpsons have always treated the character Apu. My feeling on this is my own, and maybe I'm not considering it enough, granted. My initial reaction, and I could be talked out of it one way or the other, but here's my, my initial reaction. One of the great things about The Simpsons is that they have habitually made fun of everybody and respected everybody. Um, they have gone after Canada. They talk about Canada in great and glowing terms. They talk about this thing negatively and this thing positively. I, I mean, it just seems that way. Apu usually comes across as a very noble, heroic character, but they also make fun of some of the stereotypes. But I, if, and I, I think if The Simpsons didn't do that for almost every people group they ever come across, then maybe uh, there is something there to raise an eyebrow at. For me personally, I just found that's the way they, they treat the satire with everybody and everything. I personally don't find that they've, sing they, they've cruelly singled out the Apu character for some sort of unfair treatment. But then again, I'm a pasty white dude, so what the hell do I know? But my initial uh, reaction is, you know what? No, this is the way Simpsons has always done it. Uh, not just towards the Apu character, but towards almost every kind of people group, ethnic group, gender, whatever, they seem to do it all. And because of that, I think that's just been the way their humor has gone. Um, but again, I'm, I'm speaking from, a, from the wrong point of view. But if you're asking me my opinion on it, 
that's my opinion on it. I, I think the way The Simpsons has handled Apu has always been great. I mean, he's one of the reasons he's one of the most recognizable and beloved characters in The Simpsons. I mean, they certainly, should the religious right be offended at the way they treat the Ned character? No, because it's all in fun. And, you know, as somebody who is, you know, has an evangelical Christian background like I do, I, I think the way they treat the Ned character is hilarious. Do they go after a lot of the neg negative stereotypes on Ned? Sure they do, but they do it in fun. Um, so I've never had a problem with it. But, I mean, again, every person will take that stuff differently. And I don't think there's anything wrong with somebody who takes it offensively. But I personally don't. So, anyway, that's just my thought on it. Uh, Adam K. writes... I think Incredibles 2 has a shot at beating Infinity War. Nobody expected Finding Dory to win the summer over Civil War in 2016. Incredibles 2 could do the same. Well, um, I don't know about that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go beyond I don't know about that and say I'm pretty damn sure that that's not going to happen. I'm pretty damn sure that's not going to happen. Now, first of all, Civil War made more money than Finding Dory. So let's just be clear about that. Civil War made more money than Finding Dory. Um, on top of that, there are only two Pixar films in history, two F Pixar films in history to make over a billion dollars at the box office. That is Toy Story 3, and that is Finding Dory. No other Pixar film has made over. And by the way, both of those films just crawled over a hundred or a, a billion dollars. Toy Story 3 made... Uh, 1.06 billion total worldwide. Finding Dory made 1.02 billion worldwide. I mean, so can can uh, Incredibles 2 now come out and double what the best Pixar film all time box office wise is? Can Incredibles double it? I don't know about that because you got to believe that. Look, Infinity War has a shot at $2 billion. Infinity War has a legitimate shot at the $2 billion mark. It may or may not get there, but if it doesn't get there, it'll get kind of close. You're talking about having Incredibles 2 come out and more than double what the highest grossing Pixar film of all time is. More than double it. That's too tall of an order. So no, I, I'm going to disagree with you. Respectfully, I'm going to disagree with you. I just don't believe the facts and the precedent that we have in front of us justify the idea that Incredibles 2 will beat Infinity War at the box office. I just don't see any evidence of that whatsoever. Um, but hey, anything's possible. Absolutely anything's possible. But again, I, this is just a situation. I just don't see how there's any justifiable reason to feel that way at this point. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Alton J writes, do you ever get royalties from your rant videos? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Do you mean like other people who put together rant videos of me? No, but I mean, it's a tiny amount of audience, so it, it doesn't really matter. Um, Bendik Mansika writes, hello from Norway. Have you seen the TV show, The Expanse? I think it's one of the best sci-fi shows right now. I swear, I think you, I, without exaggeration, I think you're like the fifth person to ask me on one of my shows, have you watched The Expanse? And I'll just tell you the same thing I've told everybody. Nope, never seen it. I have no problem with it. I've just, there's a lot of great TV shows there. I've never had a chance to watch. I have very little time to watch TV. Um, and The Expanse is just one of those things. I mean, it took me forever to get around to finally watching Into the Badlands. Uh, and I'm loving Into the Badlands, by the way. Um, so, uh, no, never watched The Expanse. I do, but I've had a ton of you guys tell me I should watch it, much like many of you guys told me to start watching Into the Badlands. So I will put it on my list. I will eventually get around to watching it. Uh, Metal Gear Kieran writes, just finished God of War, great story, great gameplay, and the one-shot camera really paid off. Uh, definitely has a Last of Us vibe mixed with Logan. Yeah, I'm hearing everybody talking about it. I was going to pick it up this week, but I forgot to get Ray to bring his PlayStation 4 because Ray came, Ray doesn't live in the same city as me. He only lives about an hour away. He lives in Corona. I live in Burbank. So he was just out here for the weekend with me and Ann. And I forgot to get him to bring his PlayStation 4. Because he told me I could borrow it any time. So I just always had in my mind, oh, I'll just have him bring it. So then I'll go out and buy God of War and play it. But I forgot to actually tell him to bring it. So maybe next weekend. Maybe next weekend I'll get around to finally playing it. But I'm hearing amazing things about it. Uh, I can't think of a good news username writes, will this week's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. give away Infinity War spoilers? Should I not watch until I see the movie? Nah, it didn't. Um, I watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because even though I hate the show, I keep watching it because I keep, I don't know, I hate myself, I guess. Um, 
Anyway, no, it wasn't, and actually this week's episode wasn't a terrible episode, to be honest with you, but um, no, nothing. There was the slightest allusion to the events of Infinity War. Just two characters, I don't even say which characters in case you haven't caught up, but two characters say to each other, hey, you see on the news all the crazy stuff going on in New York? That was it. That's the only kind of reference to these global catastrophic things going on in Avengers Infinity War. It will be interesting to see if Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., with all the events and everything that goes on in Infinity War, and later today is when we're doing the spoiler review, later today, Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, make sure you join us for that two-hour all-open spoiler review. Hope you join us for that. Anyway, um, it was... I'm going to be interested to see if there's any references made to the events of Infinity War other than that one line that was dropped this week of, did you hear about the crazy stuff going on in New York? And then they just completely glossed over it and just went on with their show. It's going to be interesting to see if they actually do pay any reference to it or if they're actually going to try to adopt more of a Netflix kind of feel where they start to separate their show from the rest of the MCU because maybe they realize finally that it never worked. Uh, okay, let's see. Ali Hussein writes, I am disappointed at IGN. Uh, they put up a spoilers review and post credit spoilers for Avengers Infinity War. Seriously, why? I'm glad that I avoided spoilers so far. To be honest, I'm not sure if they did that before, before or after the movie opened. I mean, look, you know me. I prefer outlets to save their spoiler stuff till at least maybe like two days after it opens. But it, as long as they wait till the movie itself opens... I'm not going to get too mad at them. You know, I, I, I don't, I, there's no point in getting angry at them. Would it be better if they waited a little bit? Sure. But I mean, as long as they at least wait till the movie opens, and I think they did, I could be wrong about that. I haven't really been following the IGN situation. So maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and just assume that they did. Uh, Michael Jones writes, hey, John, if Venom is a hit, do you think there is a better chance that Homecoming 2 may be the last time we see Spider-Man in the MCU? Yes. Now, don't get me wrong, and don't misinterpret me, and don't misquote me. I am not saying that Homecoming 2, and that's not what it's going to be called, but for our purposes, we'll just call it that for now. I am in no way saying Homecoming 2 is going to be the final uh, Spider-Man in the MCU movie. I'm not saying that. However, if, and that's a huge if, if Sony can make Venom a big hit... Let's say Venom makes $700 million, which I doubt it would. But if, if it did make $700 million, does that increase the chances that it will that embolden Sony to go, you know what? Because the deal between Sony and Marvel is over after Homecoming 2. Sony could just say, okay, we're just taking Spider-Man back and we're just going to use Spider-Man in our own films. If Venom is a big hit, and again, that's a huge if, it would embolden Sony to go, you know what? We're good, Marvel, thanks. And then just go and take Spider-Man back and go do their own thing with Spider-Man. It does increase the chances. I'm not saying that's what would happen, but if the chances were 2% right now, if Venom's a big hit, maybe the chances go up to 18%. Maybe the chances go up to 21%. I mean, let's face it. Marvel and Sony are both enjoying great success by having Spider-Man in the MCU. By all, by all accounts, from all the people connected to it, Spider-Man Homecoming really was a very collaborative effort between Sony and Marvel. And the results were fantastic. Just fantastic. I love Spider-Man Homecoming. Iron Spider garbage notwithstanding, I love Spider-Man Homecoming. But yeah, if Venom's a big hit, I think it doesn't mean... Homecoming 2 will be the last one, but I do think it increases the chances that it could be the last one. Because again, Sony will be emboldened and maybe take it from that 2% chance that Homecoming 2 is the last Spider-Man film in the MCU, maybe takes it up to like an 18% chance. Still unlikely, but more possible than it was before. All right, DG2 writes, finally going to see Infinity War tonight, about eight uh, more hours to go. I watched some reviews, yours included, but I'm still excited, gotta see it for myself. Well, I mean, almost all the reviews are positive, almost all the reviews, including mine. Mine was quite positive. Um, so, and you should be excited. It's a fun movie. Look, I don't think it's a perfect movie. I think there are a couple of hiccups along the way that were kind of inevitable because of how many characters are in the film. But that aside, everything else they knocked out of the park. 
And so the end result is a really satisfying, fun, exciting, um, hardcore comic book movie. Uh, and I hope that you had a really good time when you finally got around to going out to see it. Paul writes, Hey John, in the late 1990s, uh, when I came home from primary school, I always watched the Superman TV show with Terry Hatcher on Australian TV. That's how I became a fan of Superman. Thoughts on the show? Um, that's the Lois and Clark show, and Dean Cain played, uh, played Superman, which is funny because Dean Cain cameoed in CW Supergirl in their pilot as, uh, as her adopted father on Earth. So that was kind of a nice little cameo. Anyway, honestly, I never liked the show that much. Now, to be fair, I didn't watch a whole ton of it. I've probably seen seven, eight, or nine episodes in total. But I was never big into the show. So I never really got it. So, hey, you're big. And clearly, it had a lot of fans. That show had a lot of fans. So I'm just not one of them. That's all. No big deal. But it never quite worked for me, to be honest with you. All right. Ali Hussein writes, um, the only safe place is your show. Okay, well, I think you're talking about spoilers and everything. So yes, I have tried very hard up until this point to make my shows a safe place uh, and not giving away any major spoilers for Avengers Infinity War. But again, that comes to an end Sunday at 2 p.m. Don't worry, I'm not going to spoil. If you still haven't seen it by Sunday at 2 p.m., I'm not going to spoil the movie and the rest of my shows. But we are finally going to talk about it in an open spoilery way. Uh, Simon Hansen writes, So John... When you eventually get around to direct your own biopic, how long are you going to let Daniel Day-Lewis beg before you give him the lead role? Well, Daniel Day-Lewis can't play me because I will never be as old as Daniel Day-Lewis. So he's not the right age group. Um, if somebody were to play me in a biography of me, what a boring movie that would be, first of all. But somebody who would play me, I don't know, um, maybe I'd get uh, one of the Jonas Brothers. Yeah, there we go. I'll get one of the Jonas Brothers to play me. Why? I don't know. I'm just pulling a name out of my ass. Uh, Metal Gear K Kieran writes, If the Fox-Disney deal fails, can you see Fox doing a soft reboot on all the X-Men characters, a.k.a. the Colossus treatment via the Deadpool franchise? Well, I mean, I've said this before. I'll say it again. The reality is Fox doesn't really have to reboot anything. Every new Fox X-Men movie in, in, in and of itself, to some degree or another, has been a reboot. Yeah, they carried some themes over, but every movie has slight variations, some massive variations from previous films. I joke around about it, but it's totally true. Etched in the walls at Fox, where they make the X-Men movies, is the saying, continuity, schmontinuity. They've never cared. Colossus ain't the first character to have a massive reboot done on him within the franchise. We've seen it happen with Caliban. We've seen it happen with Sabretooth. We've seen it happen with a number of their characters, a number of different ways. They don't care about continuity. And that's fine because they've cranked out some very, very good films notwithstanding. So that's fine. That's their philosophy and it's worked for them. Cool. But it has put them in a position that if they want to reboot characters, it's not a change of pace for anything. They reboot characters all the time within their movie franchise. So would they continue on with that philosophy? I have no doubt they would. All right. Owen Curtis writes, Do you remember Billy Bob Thornton's Canadian radio meltdown a few years ago? Did that change your opinion of him? Um, I remember it. Uh, it's when he was doing an interview with his band, and he acted like a jackass. He acted like a jackass. Here's the thing, though. I think... All of us have bad moments. We all have bad moments. The difference between celebrities and us is that when we have our bad moments, there aren't usually cameras pointed at us. You know what I mean? Billy Bob Thornton had a bad moment, and I'm sure he regrets it. And he did act like a jackass. But you know what? I, I try never to judge anybody too much on one incident because we all have incidents. We all have moments that we act stupid. We all have moments that we don't allow our better judgment to control our actions. We all have moments when we have collapses of judgment. It happens. And um, so uh, honestly, I just looked at it. I remember seeing that interview thing and I thought, oh, he's acting like a complete jackass. But honestly, beyond that, it didn't really change my opinion of him. I thought, here's a, an example of this guy acting like a jackass. But I mean, it's not like he has a, um, to the best of my knowledge at any rate, I'm not a Billy Bob Thornton um, expert by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not like I see like something with him doing something jackassy every five months. You know what I mean? 
I, it's the only one real time I saw him do something really, really stupid. So I don't allow it to paint my overall impression of him as a person because we all have those bad moments. Me included, you included. So, um, nah, didn't, I mean, I thought he acted like a jackass, but it didn't really change my opinion of him. Not that I have the best opinion in the world of Billy Bob Thornton anyway, but nah, didn't really change my opinion of him. Uh, Ali Hussein writes, you know what I am most excited for in Deadpool 2 is what kind of important role Peter is playing. I'm telling you what, man, the Peter stuff in Deadpool 2, the trailer, and I'm not talking about Colossus. Uh, Peter, no, I don't have any superpowers. You're in, and he's skydiving with him. I am dying to see what they do with him in this movie. I am absolutely dying to see what they do. Even if it's just a few moments, that's fine. He doesn't have to be a major character in the film. Maybe he only has four or five scenes, but I'm dying to see those four or five scenes. Because what they've done with this character marketing-wise, has been nothing short of absolutely brilliant. So I, I've absolutely loved it. I cannot wait to see. And it's funny now, because when I go to movies and, and the trailers come up, right? When the Deadpool 2, 2 trailer plays and Peter comes on, the, it brings the house down. People are so excited about Peter. Uh, so yeah, I can't wait to see what they do with him. Uh, Phil Lee writes, I know how Thanos is beat. He's married to Martha. <laughs> Why did you say that name, Phil? Um, 786 uh, writes, Watched Infinity War last night. Can't wait for the spoiler review discussion. A lot to talk about. Damn right, there's a lot to talk about. Glad I didn't see it in 3D. Oh, me too. But then again, you know me. I hate 3D. I never want to see anything in 3D. Cannot wait for the spoiler discussion. There is so much to talk about. There is so much to talk about. Like, it's just, I don't even know if two hours is going to be enough time. We got to limit it to two hours because Ann and I are going to go see Stomp later tonight. But we, we are going to have to limit it to two hours. But it's going to probably feel like we're just scratching the surface at two hours. It's going to be nuts. Uh, Stephen Mattern writes, Going to see Infinity War tonight. Thanks, IGN and Forbes, for letting spoilers go free. So did, I, I mean, maybe I missed it. Did IGN let the spoilers out early? Did they let it out before the movie came out? I certainly hope they didn't. I, I'd be really disappointed in IGN if they did that. Um, Anthony R. writes, not that they care if I'm disappointed in them or, in them or not. Uh, Anthony R. writes, so I had one thing spoiled already, but I'm not mad because it was obvious and something I predicted. It won't affect my viewing experience. But the other thing to keep in mind, Anthony R., is that I saw some quote-unquote spoilers out there, and I know that those spoilers aren't true. Just keep in mind that there is a possibility that whatever one thing was spoiled for you, maybe it's not real. Because I have seen some false spoilers floating around that a bunch of people are talking about and believe that there were spoilers. Maybe you'll get lucky and that'll be one of the situations for you. I mean, maybe it won't be. Maybe it'll be a real spoiler for the movie. But just keep in mind, there are some fake spoilers going around out there and maybe you'll be one of the lucky guys and it's one of the false ones that you heard. Fingers crossed. Uh, Blake Feely writes, seeing Avengers tonight, if the Disney slash Fox merger happens, could we get Howard the Duck in Deadpool 3? God, I hope not. You know, I, I love what James Gunn has done with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Just love it. I mean, I was more of a fan of the first one than the second one, but still what he's done with that franchise, with those characters, especially that first movie, man, that first Guardians of the Galaxy movie was just amazing. Loved it. But I think the one big misstep he had with the Guardians of the Galaxy is, is using Howard the Duck. And I get why he did it. It probably seemed like a really funny idea, but to me that Howard the Duck incarnation is lame. And I know you're probably joking around about Howard the Duck and Deadpool, but still, I, I don't want any more Howard the Duck. Please no more Howard the Duck. I'm fine, thank you. Uh, Ali Hussein writes, there is rumors saying that Peter is playing Peter Wisdom. I hope that's not your, I can't see that happening. I mean, anybody who's saying that clearly doesn't know anything about Peter Wisdom. And, and granted, most people don't know much about Peter Wisdom. But first of all, Peter Wisdom is like an MI6 agent. He's, he's from London, first of all. And that ain't, just think James Bond in the MCU, okay? That ain't Peter that we're seeing in the trash. So no, he ain't Peter Wisdom. I mean, look, anything's possible. Maybe they do make him Peter Wisdom, sure. But that would undermine, first of all, he's nothing like Peter Wisdom. Secondly, it would completely undermine this whole great notion of this just, yeah, just some guy comes in, Deadpool goes, you're in, because you showed up. I mean, that would undermine that. So I don't know, I, I, I do not think it's true, and I really hope it's not true. 
Uh, Steven Madden writes, eight hours and counting. I can't wait for you to see the movie, man. Uh, Billy Bombastic writes, Thor 1, my favorite MCU film. Patrick Doyle's score as well. I'll be honest with you, I don't really think a lot about the scores in the, in the Avengers or MCU movies. The, the main theme itself is quite good. Bum, 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 bum. I've always liked the main theme, but I'll be honest with you, I never really pay much attention to the scores in the movies, but uh, that Thor movie, not my favorite MCU movie, but it ranks right up there. It's directed by Kenneth Branagh. I think the movie is brilliant. Um, so you're going to get, uh, you can join me anytime in a let's talk about the first Thor movie party because I think it's it and Man of Steel are the two most underrated comic book films ever, I believe. Uh, let's see. James Peter writes, finally seeing Ready Player One this weekend. I'm glad you are amongst all the quiet place and now Avengers Infinity War buzz. I'm glad there are still people like you, James, remembering. Yeah, I still haven't seen that Ready Player One movie. I need to get out and see it which is awesome because Ready Player One is terrific. I had, I've never read the books. So I had no pre-existing bias going in other than the fact that it's being made by my favorite filmmaker, but still I've been disappointed by Steven Spielberg. I'm looking at you, the terminal. Um, but I loved Ready Player One. So much fun with that movie. I had a great time with it. Uh, David Obenauer writes, what is the end game for these groups that want to lower the movie's ratings? Uh, does not seem to be working in my opinion. Well, what David's talking about is that there are these groups of people, self-proclaimed groups of people, that try to organize people to go and downvote Marvel movies or try to go and downvote Star Wars movies. And I, honestly, what's their end game? I don't know. Because even if you succeed, nobody gives a shit. Oh no, you, you managed to get the audience score on Avengers Infinity War to go from 87 to 74. Ooh, nobody gives a shit because everybody saw the movie and they loved it. So nobody gives a shit. Um, so I honestly don't know what, I, I mean, here's the thing. They think, they're just really lonely, sad, pathetic people. I mean, that's it. I mean, that's all there is to it. Lonely, sad, pathetic people. Now, I'm not talking about people who watched a movie, didn't like it, and decided to downvote it because they didn't like it. That's, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But these people who, even before they see the movie, decide they're going to join with other people and organize to try to rally as many people to go and downvote. And it's funny because in some of their manifestos, and I've read a couple of them, like they even like, as if they're doing some heroic, say, we can get together and we can make a difference. Well, you're not accomplishing anything other than getting the rest of us to talk about how pathetic and how much of a loser you are. That's the only thing you're really accomplishing. But they think they're being a champion for something else, which is just ludicrous. Uh, but they're just losers. Just, just absolute losers. No way, other way to put it. Uh, Bernard Gayton writes, uh, like a Jaeger from Pacific Rim, do you think major blockbusters would benefit from having two directors who can work as closely as the Russo brothers have been? Or are they the exception? Thanks, John. No. There's no, there's no inherent benefit of it. Now, there have been, in history, some very successful uh, directing partnerships. Uh, a couple of buddies of mine, Mark Neville, Dean, Brian Taylor, they did the Crank films. I love those guys. I love the movies they make. Um, Russo brothers, Coen brothers. Uh, but then you get the Wachowskis, who, yeah, they gave us The Matrix, but they've given us a lot of hot messes other than that. There have been other directing tan uh, tandems as well. But let's face it, the biggest blockbusters of all time have all been directed by single film directors with one single vision. Um, but can it work when you've got a team director partnership? Yeah, the Coen brothers proved that. The Russo brothers have proved that. Yes, it can work. Does that mean do they have advantages over single thing directors? I don't think so. I mean, look, the biggest hits of all time have all been, and the greatest films of all time have been directed by single vision directors. But that doesn't mean it can't have some advantages and it can't work with duos. The Russo brothers prove that. But uh, no, no. If I was a producer, um, I would never be thinking, you know what this movie needs? Two directors. I would never think that. You don't get me wrong. If, I, if I'm producing a movie and then the Russo brothers' name comes across my desk, yeah, they clearly have a track record of success. I would totally think about that. But I would never start off thinking, hey, you know what we really, really need? We need two directors on this. I would never think that way, personally. Uh, and I don't think anybody in the studio system really does either. Uh, let's see. Uh, ZOMG Ruler writes, I don't know about Infinity War beating Force Awakens. It's going to be close. 
it's gonna be close. Look, I'm hoping to get this done fast enough to have this up by 5 a.m. on Sunday morning, Pacific Standard Time. Which means if you're watching this as I put it up, in just a couple of hours, we're gonna find out. It's close. Infinity Wars Thursday night numbers were not as big as The Force Awakens Thursday night numbers. Infinity Wars Friday numbers were not as big as The Force Awakens Friday numbers. I think like um, Infinity War had like 52 million on its Thursday. Sorry, Star Wars The Force Awakens had like 52 million on its Thursday. Infinity War had 39 million on its Thursday, which made it the biggest Thursday of any comic book movie in history, but still. Friday... I believe Infinity War made $105 million on Friday alone, but The Force Awakens made $119 million on Friday alone, on its first Friday. It's going to be tight. It is going to be close. I think whichever one comes out on top, it's going to be within $10 million. I think if Infinity War does not catch The Force Awakens, it'll come within $10 million. And if it beats The Force Awakens, it'll barely beat it. It'll be within $10 million that it beats it. So it's gonna be close. It's gonna be very, very close. Uh, the Halo Brony writes, I can only afford one more movie for a while. Quiet Place or Infinity War a second time? Help me. Oh, no, no, no question. Quiet Place. Now, it becomes a more of a conundrum if I haven't seen A Quiet Place and I haven't seen Infinity War, which one do I go see? That's more of a conundrum. But if you've already seen one of them and not the other, then the answer is obvious. You go see the one you haven't seen. These are two fantastic movies. They're very different from each other. I have no hesitation in saying Infinity War is great, but I have no hesitation that if you have seen Infinity War and not seen A Quiet Place, Get your ass to the theater and watch A Quiet Place. It's just too special of a movie. Um, and again, it would be much a much tougher discussion to have if you hadn't seen either of them. But since you have seen Infinity War, no question asks. No questions asked. Go see A Quiet Place. Uh, Metal Gear Kieran writes, As a proud Patreon supporter, oh, thank you so much, Metal Gear. Um, would you ever consider reviewing movies we, the supporters, suggest? If so, you got to watch Samurai Cop. No, I don't think so. Um... First of all, mainly because of this. You're saying I should watch Samurai Cop. Okay, great. I make a review. Realistically, how many people are going to watch my review? None. No one's going to watch it. Um, you know, like, look, I did my Avengers Infinity War review. I've got 250,000 views on that. Actually, as of this recording, let me just bring up something here and hope I can keep the volume from kicking in. I'm not hey. sure I can. Okay. As of this recording, um, 260,000 views, right? On my Avengers Infinity War review. That's great. However, you know, let's go back to a couple of other movies here. Um, my Rampage review only has 21,000 views. My Quiet Place review only has 18,000 views, which is like uh, really unfortunate. Um, my blockers review, which is a less, you know, a less, not as successful movie. So not as many people interested, 15,000 views. Ready player one was a bigger movie. Got 45,000 views. Um, let's see, you know, Isle of Dogs, a movie not a lot of people saw. So it only got 12,000 views, right? So the point here is like Lost in Space, a lot of people watch Lost in Space. So when I did my Netflix Lost in Space reviews, that got like 90,000 views. The, the point here is. I could put in time, energy, and effort to make a video on Samurai Cop, but then I, I like nobody would watch it. So I would have sunk probably about five hours, like half of a day, into making a video review that nobody wanted to see me do a video review of. So probably not. Here's what I am considering, though. I am considering um, doing more retro reviews, like do more um, uh, revisit reviews, as I like to call them. And what I would, might end up doing is like putting together a list of five potential revisit review movies and then presenting those to the Patreon supporters and then the Patreon supporters determine which of those movies I actually do a revisit review for. That is something I would consider doing. But like, for instance, just taking a random email from anybody and saying, hey, do a review of this movie that nobody else is going to care about and no one else is going to watch on my channel, that would probably not be an efficient use of time. And time is a very slim commodity that I have. So yeah, that's, that's probably what I'll probably end up doing. 
But thank you again for being a Patreon supporter, man. I really appreciate it. Koba asks, I just got to ask, is it better than Age of Ultron? I think so. And I like Age of Ultron. Is it better than Age of Ultron? Yes. I think Infinity War, I, I feel safe saying Infinity War is better than Age of Ultron. Even though I like Age of Ultron, I, th I feel pretty safe saying, yep, it's better than that. All right. Ali Hussein writes, is it possible that Sony is going to put Venom in the MCU with Spider-Man in future sequels, or is it depending on the success of the movie? I mean, anything's possible at this point. And, but here's the conundrum, right? If Venom, like we were saying earlier, if Venom's a big hit, it might increase the chances that Sony just pulls Spider-Man out of the MCU and back into their own universe. If Venom's a flop, then why would the MCU want Venom in the MCU? So, I mean, anything is possible, and I'm sure all the cards are on the table. They could do anything. So what you're proposing here could happen, but I have my doubts. I, I, I do have my doubts that something like that could happen. Uh, Captain Mexico 21 writes, do you still dislike Iron Spider after Avengers? Yes, I do. I, I love Spider-Man, and I love Tom Holland, and I love the Peter Parker character, and I love all that, but I still think the armor he wears is stupid. Um, and is an insult to Spider-Man, is an insult. Um, yeah, I, I, that's just the way. Now, I know there are a lot of people who feel differently, and that's great. I'm not going to try to talk anybody out of it, but if you're going to ask me and put me on the spot, do I still dislike the whole gimmick they used about giving Peter that stupid costume? Yes, I, I still dislike it. I still do. Love the character, hate the costume he wears. Uh, Ali Hussein writes, uh, do you think Venom is going to be rated R? I, you know, I would have thought so, but I think I'm hearing that it's not. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I might be hearing that it's not rated R, which is totally fine. You can get away with a lot with PG-13. You can get away with a lot with PG-13. So if they don't need to make it rated R, and I don't know that they need to make it rated R. I believe I heard it's going to be PG-13. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Jess... Jason Than writes, I did something stupid. Uh-oh. I booked for Infinity War IMAX one month, only to realize I booked for a theater in British Columbia, and I'm in Toronto. Now I'm stuck in the second row seat in IMAX, still excited. Well, I'm assuming you thought you were going to be in British Columbia uh, at the time. So that's not stupid. That was just That's just trying to be prepared. But circumstances change. You couldn't end up going. No big deal. Um, so don't worry about that. Man, second row IMAX. That's rough. I honestly don't know that I would even go. I'm not telling you not to go. I'm just saying if it's me, I don't even know that I could go. The second row IMAX. Man, I would, if it were me personally, I would probably resell my ticket and just wait till I can see it with from a decent seat. I, I mean, I don't know. And there's some theaters where second row is perfectly great. There are some theaters that second row is fine. But IMAX, that's a tough sell, man. I, I I feel bad for you. Like, look, look. I'm talking as somebody who has already seen the movie, so m maybe my opinion is pointless here. But honestly, if if the first night I was supposed to see it, I found out my seat was a second row IMAX, I might wait. But that's, that's just me, man. You do what works for you, though. You do what works for you. Um, Inshaw writes, Do you watch Jeremy Johns? Have you met, <laughs> have you met him? Um, you two are my favorite movie guys. Well, um, I only worked with him for a year. Um, and he was all over my social media when he was living in LA. Of course, he's back living in Seattle. So uh, uh, just to answer your question, Yes, I have met Jeremy Johns. <laughs> yes, I've met Jeremy Johns. Um, Trevor Brooks writes, I'm greedy. I admit I want uh, I admit I'm a Marvel fan, but I want good DC movies because like I said, I'm greedy. So far I'm mostly disappointed. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are in that boat. I think a lot of people are people just want great comic book movies. I don't care what corporate label is on it, whether it's a Marvel corporate label or a DC corporate label, they're just corporate labels at the end of the day. I just want good comic book movies. Um, so, you know, when Man of Steel comes out and it's awesome, yay! When Avengers Infinity War comes out and it's awesome, yay! And when, you know, when a movie comes out, unfortunately, a lot of film goers have not been happy with the DC stuff. And it's not because they're biased for Marvel or anything like that. Most film fans don't give a shit. 
hey man, I watched all these Marvel films and I love them, so I'm going to hate the DC movies. There are some people who like to think that's how people think, but they don't. Most of the average film going community don't care what corporate live, they just wanna like the movies. And a lot of people haven't liked. Now, I am a very strange duck in the sense that I have liked every single one of the DCU movies. I've given positive reviews, I admit. I know a lot of people don't like Suicide Squad. I gave it a positive review. I know a lot of people weren't all that thrilled with Batman vs Superman. I gave it a positive review. Uh, some people didn't like Justice League. I get why, but I did get a kick out of it and I gave it a positive review. So I like every single DCU mo movie. I just want them all to be good. But more than that, I want them to be so good that everybody else loves them too. And that's why I want them to reboot because they clearly haven't done it. Clearly, it's indisputable that they failed to do that. They have failed to get the audience to love their franchise the way the MCU has gotten the audience to love their franchise. And the DC characters are too good to not be beloved like that. And they got off to the wrong start. Okay, whatever, it happens. And they've kind of dug themselves into a hole. Okay, whatever, it happens. Um, Avengers Infinity War is opening this weekend and it's opening weekend box office is gonna be more than double, more than double what, um, I mean, it's gonna be more than triple. A Avengers Infinity War's opening weekend box office, their big team up superhero movie is gonna be more than triple what Justice League's opening weekend box office was. Triple, not beat it by 10 million, not beat it by 20 million, triple what Justice League did. That's not good. I mean, that's not what we want. I want everybody loving the DC, you know, movies. And the best way to get people on board now is to start with a fresh slate, reboot. That's just my opinion on that. But some people disagree and that's fine. Uh, let's see here. Gary Verbenine writes, Hey John, big fan from Belgium. Oh, thanks so much, Gary. Uh, since Man of Steel, what's your best score from the MCU? Winter Soldier, First Avenger, uh, and Infinity War are pretty badass. Thank you and happy Rusev Day and happy Rusev Day to you as well, my friend. Um, honestly, like I was saying a little bit earlier, I, I quite frankly don't pay much attention to the score. And that is a, a compliment to the score because most of the time the score should be a part of the DNA of the scene to elevate a scene and not really stand out too much in and of itself. Sometimes it needs to, sometimes it doesn't, whatever. But honestly, I, I don't pay a lot of attention. Even like with when Hans Zimmer is doing like movies in the DC cinematic universe, some of them I really remember, like Kal El, Superman's theme in the new Superman movies. Dun, 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 dun. Like I love that theme. But the rest of the soundtrack, I don't really pay most, much attention to, to be honest with you. That's, I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying that's wrong, but it's just, I just don't. So I'm not the right person to ask that question for, Gary. I do know that I love the, um, the music in Winter Soldier, I thought was great. I do. And I think the music's used well in Infinity War, but again, doesn't really stand out to me so much. Uh, Technovine writes, ah, John, can't wait to join Infinity War spoiler talk today. That again, a little bit later today, 2 p.m. Make sure you're there joining us, guys. Uh, Frankie LaRusso writes, hey, John, been watching you daily since January of 2013. Thank you so much, man. Uh, couldn't see Infinity War in Dolby Prime, but decided to make Deadpool 2 my first Dolby movie. Cheers. Hey, man, seriously, Avengers Infinity War would have been a great one to make your first uh, AMC Prime. It, that would have been a great one to make your first AMC Prime. Absolutely. But if you couldn't, Deadpool 2 seems like a pretty nice follow-up as well. So I think you're going to have a great time there at it. Have a blast. Enjoy yourself. And I, I think that don't, don't you worry about it. Yeah, it would have been great if you could have seen Infinity War on Prime. Yes. But I think Deadpool 2 is going to be a really nice one to have your first experience as well. Not to mention you're probably going to have more laughs in it because it's Deadpool. So enjoy yourself, man. Enjoy yourself. Uh, ben Hayusa writes, I find it ridiculous that I scroll through YouTube and find recorded footage of Infinity War that people attending the theater illegally record. Shit needs to stop. You know, here's the interesting thing. How does it, how does it even get published? How does YouTube's copyright algorithm not pick up that stuff right away? I mean, hell, I try to do a trailer review and I get flagged for content copyright. Now I, I fight it and usually they rescind the uh, the content strike, but still 
I put up a trailer review with segments from a trailer and small down here in the corner of, of my screen and it gets flagged almost instantly. How are these people putting up like footage from a movie and it not get flagged? I, I mean, that's the part that's just completely astounding to me. Uh, and it is frustrating that people do that. They shouldn't do that. Luke Skywalker writes, Halloween trailer shown at CinemaCon. Journalists gave descriptive detail about it and what they saw. Are NDA usually signed and journalists can't disclose details to the public until the actual trailer release? Well, no, no, Luke. I mean, that's why they invited the journalists to be there. That's what you, you don't invite the journalists to be at that event where you're going to show all this stuff if they're not allowed to talk about what they're seeing. They want the journalists to talk about it, to get them buzzing. Like, oh no, I can't wait to see that trailer. Like, I can't wait to see that footage they talked about. Like for instance, they talked about the uh, Aquaman footage that was shown. Cinema Blend did a really nice, did a really nice little uh, write up on uh, the Aquaman man footage that was there. And they did a great job of it. And it's got all of us now salivating. Oh, now we can't wait to see it. That's the reaction that they want. So. The whole reason they invite journalists to be at CinemaCon is to talk about it so people can get excited about it before they actually launch it. So no, there are no NDAs signed because the whole purpose they have journalists there. If they didn't want journalists talking about it, they wouldn't, they wouldn't invite journalists to come and be part of it. It's just that simple. Uh, Cameron Shaw writes, Dear John, do you think Peter Dinklage could make a good James Bond villain? I'll give you the same answer I give anybody when somebody says, do you think this actor would be good in this role? As long as they're a good actor, sure. Peter Dinklage is an exceptional actor. So sure, put him in as anything. He'll do anything well. He'll do anything well. There are a hundred other actors who would make good James Bond villains too. But if you're going to throw Peter Dinklage's name out there, I'll go sure. He's a good actor, so I have no problem with it. I think it'd be great. Um, C Spice writes, John, I saw Infinity War, loved it. Can't wait to discuss with you on Sunday. What an amazing but stressful ass movie. This is what I keep telling people. If you haven't, seen, first of all, if you've seen the movie, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen the movie, believe me, you are going to be exhausted. When the movie is done, you are going to be exhausted. It is a stressful, exhausting movie. Absolutely. It is an experience. You know what I'm always saying? Movies are supposed to be experiential. Whether they're documentaries, dramas, um, horror, comedy, action, adventure, um, period piece, whatever, they are supposed to be experiences when you engage with them. Infinity War is absolutely an experience. All right, Ali Hussein writes, John, have you seen the latest episode of Krypton? I was, it, I think you meant it was. It was a great episode. Uh, P.S. I'm watching Avengers Infinity War in three hours from now. So excited. Well, by now you would have seen it because obviously you sent this in the other day. Um, Yes, I have seen the latest episode of Krypton. I'm enjoying Krypton. It's it's not blowing my socks off like another brand new um, comic based show, Black Lightning. I'm loving Black Light. Like I love Black Lightning. Krypton, I like though. I'm on board. I'm on board with Krypton. It's not blowing my socks off yet, but I'm digging where they're going there because you know what? It's not a Superman show. It's a character driven show. There's a lot of intrigue and drama and all that kind of stuff. And I'm digging it. I am. I'm, I'm into it. Again, I'm not loving it. Uh, I'm not fully committed to the show at this point, but I'm watching each episode and each episode has me going, yeah, that was pretty good. I'm looking forward to the next episode. So that's where I'm at with Krypton so far and, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, C Spice writes, can't believe Chewbacca killed Thanos. So weird, man. It was a really weird Patton Oswald crossing of the universe predictions coming true, right? When Chewbacca, by the way, it's funny because in the trailer, one of the trailers in Infinity War, we see Thanos getting ready to throw a moon. And in the expanded universe Star Wars novels, how did Chewbacca die? He got hit by a moon. There you go. So some of you guys never knew that. Yep. In the Star Wars expanded universe novels, Chewbacca met his end being hit by a moon. I wish I could make that up. Um, Javier Belmer writes, after watching Infinity War twice now, my next move is to sit down and listen attentively to Alan Silvestri's brilliant score. Tomorrow I'll rewatch it again. You know, I got to listen to a score too. Because again, like I said, during the movie, I don't really pay much attention to it. It's just there inhabiting the scene, which is a good thing. But I don't really like pay attention to the music as it's playing out. So I completely have to do that. I've now I've got to, now that I've seen the movie three times, I need to sit down and just listen to the score so I can appreciate it a little bit more. 
Uh, Black Nerd 45 writes, Hey, John, do you think Superman could handle Thanos? I enjoy the show. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. As a matter of fact, yes, I do. I think Superman could beat Thanos. I do. Because he's Superman. So, yes, I believe. I mean, Thanos could throw Moon at him. Superman just goes, swap, gone. I mean, so... And you can argue, but, you know, Superman's a thing to magic. Well, the Infinity Stones aren't really magic per se. Um, but so yeah, I'll, I'll take Superman in that fight. Even with the Infinity Gauntlet, I'll take Superman in that fight. Uh, Trevor Brooks writes, Hey John, your lighting looks a little off today. My lighting is always the same. Like I'll, I'll show you guys around my studio here uh, in a video in the next week or so. But like all my lights are in place. I just turn the switch on. I mean, so I don't really change much unless maybe one of the light, I forgot to turn off one or turn on one of the lights. I'm uh, not really saying anyway. Uh, I saw Infinity War last night, had high expectations and wasn't disappointed. Yeah, I had pretty high expectations too. And I was not disappointed. I was not disappointed. Even with the little problems I had with the film, I was expecting those little problems. So I was ready for those. I was prepared for those. The rest of the film totally delivered uh, and it's just a great experience. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hamza Al-Kayat writes, some a-holes posted some pics from Infinity War. It completely ruined the movie for me. What would they gain from it? Now I'm going tonight knowing what happened. Well, here's the thing. The spoilers did spoil some stuff for you. That's unfortunate. But believe me when I tell you, uh, uh, Hamas, that it did not ruin the movie. Believe me when I tell you, the movie is not ruined for you. You are going to have a wonderful experience with this movie, even if you know some of the things that happen. It sucks that the movie got, that a number of the things in the movie got spoiled for you. That sucks. It shouldn't happen. But there are pathetic losers out there who have nothing better to do with their time because they're never going to have a girl touch their penis, let's be honest. Um, there are pathetic losers out there who have nothing better to do with their time. So it's unfortunate it gets ruined for some people, yes. But believe me when I tell you the movie's not ruined. You are still going to have a good experience with this film. And it, some of the scenes won't have the, the, the highest amount of impact because you know they're coming. That's unfortunate. But... Go into it still with a smile on your face because I still think you're going to have a very, very good time. All right. Raccoon writes, someone give Thanos a Snickers already. <laughs> That's a great call out to the... I love those commercials, by the way. I love them. They should totally do one with Thanos. That would be marketing genius. Do one of those Snickers commercials with Thanos or Hulk. That would be a great one. Like Hulk's like, Rrr! and Thor's like, give him a Snickers. The Hulk not hungry. Uh, yes, you are hungry. When you get hungry, you get nasty. And then he bites it, and then he's Bruce Banner. There you go. But doing one with Banner or doing one with Thanos, that would be great too. Uh, Hamza writes, people should be ashamed. We were talking about all the uh, spoiler stuff. Yeah, they should, but they're not because they're too stupid to, to understand that they should be ashamed in the first place. They're just too dumb. Um, they are pathetic lowlives who aren't intelligent enough to even realize they should be ashamed. So, hey, whatever. They are what they are. Uh, John Kelly writes, earlier chat regarding emptiness of theater. Liked it. Th you know what? This was probably from one of the shows I did probably Friday or something where he sent in a question that did get on live and then this one didn't get on live and I'm just forgetting what the context is. Sorry about that, John Kelly. Uh, Go Kings Go 83 writes, Hey, Giovanni, long-time listener, first-time caller. Will Solo and Deadpool steal the thunder of Infinity War? I mean, uh, don't know how, but so many good movies. I don't think so, because here's the reason. I, I've been We've been talking about this before. Infinity War is going to have the theater all to itself until its third weekend. Deadpool doesn't open until Infinity War's third weekend. By that point, Infinity War's already made the vast majority of its money. Uh, so it's not a big problem. I think people are going to be excited after Infinity War to see another comic book movie. And then I think seeing Deadpool is going to make everybody excited. I mean, I haven't seen Deadpool 2 yet, but I'm thinking it's going to be great. That people are going to want to go back and watch. So no, I don't think it's going to steal the thunder. Look, if Deadpool was opening the very next week, mm, no, then, then, then it could hurt. But you know what? It's not opening until its third weekend. So I honestly think it's going to be fine. 
What's really gonna be an interesting thing is because Deadpool opens and then Solo opens the weekend after Deadpool. That's gonna be more interesting. But Infinity War has got a lot more breathing room between it and those two movies. So I think Infinity War is gonna be just fine. I, I think it's gonna be okay. Uh, Bernard uh, Gayton writes, took off work to see Infinity War, about to see it. That's called good life decisions, my friend. That is called some good life decisions. You know what, if I was your boss, I'd give you a raise. I'm just saying, if I were your boss, I'd give you a raise. Uh, Dutch3k5 writes, with the next Avengers film one year away, when do you think we will get a trailer or any kind of footage? Uh, hashtag go Vegas Knights go. What a season for the Knights, right? That's a topic for another video, but oh my God, an expansion team. Anyway, um, I'm not, not anytime soon. Not anytime soon. Um, maybe even Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, maybe even Christmas. I, I am not expecting any footage, anything like that. I think maybe sometime in the fall we'll get a title, but uh, as far as real footage goes, I'm not expecting anything till maybe Christmas. I mean, very well could come a little bit before that, could come after, but, uh, but honestly, right now, my guess would be around Christmas. We'll have to wait and see. That's not normally how they've marketed the, their stuff, but these are not normal movies, right? So we'll have to just wait and see. Uh, Francesca de Pisa writes, uh, can you take email questions Sunday because I won't be able to watch live? No, I won't be able to take email questions because here's the reality, uh, Francesca. If I, even if I did take email questions, I would get about 500 of them sent in. So even if you sent in an email question, the, the, the odds are you're, it's not going to get answered anyway. Um, that's just the reality. And you know, it's, it, it has been a discussion but it seems that most of my viewers agree. Like when I made the switch that I mostly, I mean, first of all, on the John Campia show, the main topics are still from the emails. But when I didn't take the live super chat questions, I got complaints on an almost daily basis from people getting mad at me for saying, why don't you ever pick my question? I've been sending you a question for six months and you never, like, I get like a hundred emails a day and I only take about three emails a day. So that means there's a 97% chance that your email doesn't get picked. And that sucks, but I mean, that's, there's nothing I can do about that. It's just the way it is. So when I was doing it that way, or then I would take Twitter questions, right? I used to, a long time ago, I used to take Twitter questions, but like my Twitter feed would go like this, like I get like 400 tweets sent in and I had time to maybe take like seven or eight of them. So like there's a 95% chance you could be sending me tweets and never gets answered. Nothing personal, but it, that's just the numbers, right? And I would almost daily, and I get it, I would almost daily get people writing me saying, like, what did I do? Why did I offend you? You're not taking my question. It's like, you didn't do anything. It's just that that's the math. I, it's a 97% chance that I'm not going to get to your question. And I would like at least five, six, seven of these emails a week from different people saying, like demanding why their questions don't get picked or stuff like that. And it's like, oh, it, this, uh, and the funny thing is when I started doing the super chat stuff, a couple of interesting things happened. Number one is this. First of all, obviously, Super Chat's a great way for the channel to be supported. I mean, if it wasn't for Super Chat, um, obviously, and the Patreon supporters and all that kind of stuff, I would never be able to pay Ray, and I would never be able to pay Jonathan. I mean, I am not a monstrously huge YouTube channel. I'm just a dude doing this on my own. I mean, I, I wouldn't have money to pay these guys. Because of the Super Chats and stuff like that, it's created more revenue for the channel, and I'm able to support myself and support Ray and support Jonathan, and that's been great. But the two other benefits have been this. One is that by doing super chats to take my questions that way, it 100% guarantees that if you send in a question using super chat, it does get answered. Guarantees it. I could never do that with email and I could never do that with Twitter. It just wasn't possible. But with super chats, I can guarantee because not everybody you know, wants to pay two bucks or five bucks or like some people are really generous and they contribute 20 bucks, or whatever. And that's been awesome. Thank you so much. But it guarantees the question gets answered. So if somebody really wants a question answered, you know, it gives them an avenue that they can have it answered guaranteed. If it doesn't get answered on the live show, we make these companion videos and we guarantee it gets answered. Here's the secondary benefit that I wasn't anticipating. I can honestly say this with 100% honesty. 
Ever since I started doing the Super Chat stuff, I have received a grand total of zero complaints from anybody complaining that their email didn't get picked or their tweet didn't get picked or their question didn't get picked because now everybody knows there is a guaranteed avenue. If you really have a question that you really want answered, there is an avenue to guarantee it gets selected and to guarantee that it gets addressed. And I have gone from getting five to seven to eight to nine complaints a week to getting in the past few months, getting a grand total, full honesty here, of zero of those complaints. So it's been working for me on several levels. So I know that's, that's, that's a little bit more than what you're asking about, Francesca, but I just thought I'd use your question as a great opportunity to kind of explain the whole system of the Super Chat stuff and why it's worked so well for me and why it's seemed to have worked so well for my viewers as well. So, um, so for that reason, I, I won't be taking emails. It's gonna be about the live discussion. And again, even if I was taking emails, I'm gonna get like five, I would get about 500 of them and the reality is you'd be a 95% chance that yours wouldn't get picked anyway. So it sucks that you won't be able to be there to join us, but that's totally cool. Just the odds are somebody's going to ask a question that you probably got burning in your head because we've got two hours of discussion. So it'll, somebody will probably ask about it. All right. Uh, but anyway, the, I, I hope you guys don't mind me talking a little bit of inside baseball there and showing you. I just, I always want to be completely open and transparent with how I do things on this channel because this channel exists because of you guys. And I want to make sure you're aware of how it functions and how it runs. So forgive me if I just bored you with all that stuff, but I, I just, I like to make sure you guys are informed and you guys know what's going on here and why things go on here the way they do. Okay. Thanks so much, Francesca. Uh, Chris Warden writes, Saw Infinity War last night and was completely blown away. Perfect land of, I think you meant blend, of Empire Strikes Back and Lord of the Rings Return of the King, in my opinion. I would not go there, personally, um, but it is a great movie. I had a great time. You apparently liked it a little bit more than I did, which is cool. I love it, but you liked it a little bit more than I did. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a blend of Empire and Return of the King, but hey, you're not alone in thinking that. I've heard other people make that comparison, too. So I'm glad your experience was so good. I, I, I'm really glad it was. Uh, here we go. Javier Belmer writes, Hey, John, just want to share with everyone that Alvin Silvestri's score for Infinity War is out. I recommend people listen to it. It's another great experience. Yeah, you and a few other people, Javier, have been mentioning that. And again, I agree. I got Now that I've seen the movie three times, hopefully I'll see it four times before Monday hits. Because um, I'm going to try to get out to see it later tonight if I can. But I, now that I've seen it a number of times, I need to just sit down and listen to the, uh, listen to the soundtrack. All right. Uh, Teresa Malakova writes, when do you think we'll get the Avengers 4 title? Well, like I was just mentioned, I'm thinking sometime after the summer, um, sometime in the fall, somewhere between August and November is what I'm guessing. And then sometime after that, we'll get our first trailer footage, whatever. Pardon me. Once Ant-Man is well in our rearview mirror. So that's my guess. I have no insider information. My, my guess is strictly based on a guess. It's nothing more than a guess, just to be clear about that. Okay. Uh, Celia writes, I'm so excited to see again in IMAX 3D. Love it. Well, I'm, if you like 3D, then I'm awesomely happy that you get to watch it in 3D. I, you could not pay me. Honestly, you couldn't pay me to watch it in 3D. But if you like 3D, like some other people do, then I'm really glad you have that chance to see it. And I'm glad you saw it already and you're getting to go back and see it another time. Uh, Luna Comics writes, Saw Infinity War, and it kind of does feel like a half movie. Oh, I completely disagree. And I can't explain why right now. But to me, this is clearly a full movie. Three act structure, beginning, middle, end. There is in no way is this a half movie. I mean, if that was how you felt about it, then that's how you felt about it. That's a subjectivity film. We don't get to choose how a movie strikes us. If that's how it struck you, that's how it struck you. But since you're bringing it up, I will mention that I completely disagree wholeheartedly disagree. This is a complete movie. And I'll go into why I feel that way on the spoiler review on Sunday. And hopefully you're there, Luna, you'll be able to share your thoughts as well. Uh, Hugh Dewsbury writes, Hey, John, do you watch HBO's Westworld? Thanks. I do. I haven't started watching season two yet. I just haven't had time. Um, I like the show. I'm not in love with it. I'll be honest with you. Season one had some killer episodes, but some, uh-huh, is this show still on? Kind of really boring episodes at the same time. 
And this whole thing that people say, oh, but those episodes are necessary to, but no, no, they're not. No, they're not. You could have done them better. Uh, I'm not in love with the show, but I'm intrigued by it. Certainly a couple of killer episodes and the season finale last year was great. So I am very curious about watching season two. So I'm not really into it, but I'm into it enough and I'll see how season two goes so far. I'm hearing good things about the season premiere of season two. I haven't had a chance to watch yet, but I'm hearing good things. Uh, Ni uh, Ian Nguyen Du writes, I watched Infinity, Infinity War, my fourth viewing, good on you, man. Uh, with my sister and her husband, every time something big happens, she got excited. Love seeing her reaction. You know what? And, and I agree. I've been talking about this the last couple of days. One of the best things about movies in general in a movie theater, and this is why movie theaters are always the best place to watch a movie. Always. Infinity War is just another great example of that. One of the things I love about Infinity War on my second and on my third viewing is just watching everybody else react to all the stuff going on on screen. You can't duplicate that at home. And I'm super happy that you had a chance to, to enjoy that with your family members as well. That's awesome, man. And here's hoping you get to see it a fifth and a sixth time. All right, Charlie Lopez writes, would your top three MCU movies to see before Infinity War change after watching the film? No, I still feel pretty good about it. And I still feel the same about it. The three films, remember this came up in a topic um, prior to the movie coming out. I had somebody ask me, hey, I haven't watched hardly any of the MCU films. I have limited time and limited money between now and when Infinity War opens. If I can only watch three films before Infinity War, which three do you recommend? I recommended the first Avengers because it sets the context for everything. I recommended Civil War because it gives you more breadth of the characters and it gets you to understand the context in which the Avengers are in by the time we get to Infinity War. And I recommended um, Black Panther because Infinity War clearly Wakanda plays a big role in Infinity War. Now, I did say at the time that you could make an argument for swapping out Black Panther for Guardians of the Galaxy because Guardians of the Galaxy explains a little bit more about the Infinity Stones and we see more um, uh, Thanos than in any other MCU movie other than Infinity War. So you could make that argument and I still feel that way, but no, I stick with the three. Avengers, Civil War, Black Panther, that's the three I stick with. But again, a strong argument can be made for Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Inferno writes, what character in Infinity War was most out of character? Uh, well, when you say out of, char out of character for what? Out of character for the rest of the MCU? I don't know. They all seem pretty much in character. Um, do you mean out of character from the comic books? If that's the case, then who cares? Because the comics are the comics. The movies are the movies. Um, honestly, I can't really think of any that were out of character. I really can't. Doctor Strange was totally in character. Tony was in character. Captain America was in character. Uh, yeah, I honestly, I can't think of anybody that wasn't. Yeah. Um, Vinny S. writes, uh, Ebony Maw, top five MCU villain. He was great. He's, uh, yeah, I don't, again, I don't want to go into the spoilers. He was one of Anne's favorite characters in the movie. He's great. I love that character. Everything from his powers to the way he spoke, his attitude. I loved him in this movie. So well, I'm sure we're going to talk more about him later today in the, uh, in the uh, spoiler review. Uh, Rodney Jackson writes, uh, non-spoiler as this is in the trailer, Hydra and Cap 2, Ultron, and now Thanos are all seeking population control for the good of the universe. Mm -hmm. Um, no, not really. It, it, what, first of all, in Captain America Winter Soldier, it wasn't about population control. It was about eliminating potential bad seeds, right? That, so that was a separate thing. Ultron wasn't about population control, it was about extinction. He thought the only way to protect the world was to wipe out humanity. Not population control for the good of humanity, but just to wipe out humanity. So I see where you're going with that, uh, Ronnie, but I don't think they're, that's applicable. I think the situations are actually quite different from each other. So I'll disagree with you on that one. Good topic for discussion. I, I just have to disagree with you on it, though. All right. Not Your Average Gamer writes, Loved how they developed Peter and Stark in the MCU. Um, oh, in the MCU? Yeah, um, I don't think they they were developed in Infinity War. I don't think there was any developing in Infinity War, but I, I do like what they, the nature of the relationship between Peter and Tony, which was all established in Homecoming. 
Uh, it continues on into this new movie, but that's really where it all happened. And I agree with you. In the MCU, I do like the way they've handled that. Uh, Chris Warden writes, I know you personally hate 3D. Yes, I do. Uh, movies, but do you notice any difference between regular uh, Real D 3D and IMAX 3D through regular Real D 3D and IMAX 3D? In my opinion, I think IMAX 3D is slightly better. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it's it all sucks to me. It all sucks. It's just different flavor of suck. And since I do my very best to avoid 3D whenever I can, I really can't give any kind of a comparison. I'm, I'm, the, I'm totally the wrong guy to try to, to even ask that question to, to be honest, because you know how much I hate 3D. And I avoid it whenever I can. So the number of movies I see in 3D are so infinitesimally small. Like, I honestly, I think the last time I watched a movie in 3D was probably about six months ago, I think. I'm, maybe I'm not remembering right, but... And I couldn't, buy, I couldn't tell you whether it was a regular 3D, real D 3D, or IMAX 3D. I honestly couldn't tell you. So I'm not trying to dodge your question. It's just that I honestly have no idea. To me, it all sucks. It's like me and beer. I hate the taste of beer. Everybody around the world is not going, oh, but you're Canadian. I know. It's really weird. I'm a Canadian who doesn't like beer. Um, I hate the taste of beer. Hate beer. And then all my friends, oh, but try this beer. This beer's a, a pale uh, something or a taste like beer. That's all I know. Yeah, but try this one. This is a light this from this and this. It tastes like beer. I mean, that's all I know is it tastes like beer. Uh, and I hate beer. So that's the way 3D is for me, I guess. Uh, Chris Warden writes, Hail Caesar has an 85% critic rating. Just saying. What, what's your point? Um, that some people like it? Sure. It's the subjectivity of film. I still contend it's a piece of shit movie. What's your point? That critics got it wrong? No, most of the time the critics are completely right, but the subjectivity of film means that not everybody's gonna agree. So I'll be honest with you, Chris, I don't know what your point is. That's, I don't know what your point is. Like, what's the point of putting that up there? I have no idea. Uh, Leader of Bats writes, Infinity War is my favorite MCU film. I loved it so much. For me, it's right below the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I think a lot of people are gonna absolutely love this movie. I love the movie. To me, it's not quite in the top three MCU, but I do love it. I, I, it's great. I've seen it three times already. I'm going to see it probably three or four more times in theater. Uh, I can't wait to see it again, and I cannot wait for us to talk about it in the spoiler review. Uh, Hellboy writes, have you ever seen or have you ever been to a Flicks brew house? I have one in walking distance in Des Moines. I've never heard of it. Never heard of it. So I, clearly I don't have one around here, and I certainly didn't have any growing up in Canada. Um, so yeah, I... To answer your question, have I ever been to one? I've never even heard of it. So it sounds cool though, but I, no, I've never been to one. Now I want to look it up because it sounds intriguing. Um, Ab, Ab Hin Av writes, Avengers should have sent Dom's crew and Peter. That's right. There's your ultimate thwarting for Thanos. First of all, everybody knows if Universal lent the Dominic Toretto character to Marvel, done. Thanos never even gets never even gets um, uh, the the gauntlet in the first place. Thanos never even gets the gauntlet. Don Dominic Toretto would have stepped in there and said family, and then he would have taken Thanos down like that, just like that. Then you add Peter to it. Ah, oh, forget about it. There's your ultimate team up. And the final question today, until we are all caught up now on all the uh, all all the outstanding questions that have come in. The final question today comes to us from CJT two three one who writes. Avengers just did 105 million on Friday from Box Office Mojo. With Saturday and Sunday still to come, is 300 really that far off? Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, it's not gonna hit 300. Look, at 105 million on Friday, that is still behind what Star Wars: The Force Awakens did on its Friday. Star Wars: First Awakens on its first Friday made 119 million, and Star Wars: The Force Awakens went on to make 247 million dollars. So, uh, no. It is not going to hit 3 million, 300 million, no chance. However, the record of 247 million is in reach. It's totally in reach. I still don't think it'll get it, but it's totally possible. So that's really where we're, we're, what we're keeping our eye on. And it's like in just a few hours now, it depends on when you watch this video. This video should be, I'm hoping to have this up by five o'clock. This video goes up by five o'clock in the morning. So just a few hours from now, we will know. We will get the weekend box office report will come in and we'll know. 
but 300 is no. It, it, because if Star Wars The Force Awakens didn't get to it, and Star Wars The Force Awakens had a bigger Friday, first of all, it had a bigger Thursday than Infinity War did, and it had a bigger Friday than Infinity War did, and it ended up making 247 million, then no. We can extrapolate that and go, no, it's, it's not gonna hit 300 million. It's not gonna hit 300 million. All right, guys, that will do it for this installment of the companion video. Thanks so much for being here today, guys. Once again, if you're watching this on Sunday, don't forget, a little bit later today, we have got our Avengers Infinity War two hour, completely open, spoiler filled discussion about Infinity War. And it's not just me, and it's not just you. I'm gonna be joined by Anne Campia, my wife, who has seen the film three times herself already. So she's gonna be joining me for that as well. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Make sure you join us for that. All right, guys, that will do it for me for today's installment of the companion video. Thanks so much for joining me. My name's John Campia, and until the next video, bye bye <laughs>